Good, John Sholin, nice to meet you all. Um, so I have uh, type 1 diabetes, and uh, I've had type 1 diabetes for about 30 years. For those of you that don't know, type 1 diabetes, you feel very crappy. In my instance, my parents recognized something wasn't right, um, bring you to the hospital, and you're in the hospital for, for one or two or three days, and you're, the doctors go, and they give you this incredibly powerful drug, and they send you home, and they say, figure it out. And of course, when you're living with diabetes, there's, they say there's about 22 different factors that we're dealing with every single day in order to control our, di our blood sugars and ensure that this drug that we're taking, insulin, which, if you screw it up, becomes fatal. Uh, so I come from software technology, but the problem I had, taking insulin four, five, six times per day, every day, I would forget if I'd taken my dose. Uh, and I kept asking my doctors, why is there no solution to helping me remember if I had taken it or not? And they say, it's coming, it's coming, it's coming, it's coming. It never did. So we made this product, it's called TimeSlin. It's very simple. It's a piece of plastic, it has a clock in it. You replace the cap on your insulin pen, and it tells you when you last took your insulin. It's very simple. We sell it around the world. We have a couple hundred thousand people using our product every day. The point for me is that when you're dealing with a complex disease like diabetes, if you can simplify one decision for those people, it can be very, very, very powerful. You can make people live safer lives, more balanced, and let you focus on other things other than your diabetes. So that's the product that we make and what we're doing. We make a piece of plastic with a clock. It's pretty simple, right? Uh, but of course, using data to make better decisions is, seems like it wouldn't be a revolution, but when you're dealing with, with, with healthcare and medical devices, it is. Most of the devices that we're still using, they look like Game Boys. And, and I'm not talking about the Game Boys that with no, not even a color screen. I'm talking about the old school Game Boys that are terrible. Those are the devices that we're dealing with. So we've been trying to figure out how we can move from taking away this complexity to making simple products. So w when you have diabetes, I'll take a step back. My body doesn't produce insulin. Uh, so I need to regulate the basics are uh, how much I'm taking in, in in terms of energy from food, et cetera, how much I'm exercising, what my blood sugar is. And you try to balance all this stuff out and forget about the other 17 factors. So what I've built here um, using some open source tools is an artificial pancreas. And this is an artificial pancreas running on a raspberry. Raspberry, it uses this stick to communicate to this pump and it communicates with this continuous blood sugar meter which is attached to my arm. And I, haven't, I don't have any of the wires with, it's not running and it doesn't have the big battery that I carry with. But this is not a very usable device to be carrying around. There's currently about 25, 30 people in the world that are running this thing. And it's, it's, uh, it's been an interesting project to develop this. So why, am I, why have I done it? I've done it so that I can start to figure out and, and, and see what are the possibilities when you're starting to get data about your body, your, your condition, your diabetes, and what can you do with it. Um, and our idea has been to develop this product in a way so that you can start getting the data that's coming off this tremendously powerful drug and start doing something useful with it. So when let's go back to sensors. We're here to talk about sensors. We believe we're one of the only companies, if not the only companies, that, that in an accurate way is able to determine how much insulin has been delivered in an insulin pen by figuring out where the plunger is. Now, okay, figuring out where a plunger is with a sensor, that can't be so hard, right? Well, we're talking uh, hundreds and thousands of, of a millimeter in a way that has to be done over a huge series of time by myself, our parents, our kids, in a very, very, very regulated environment. So going, and, and it's not just a matter of taking a picture and figuring out where this thing is. The, the methods that we've developed are we're, 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 we're figuring out if Newton's laws are correct when we're doing this stuff. So it's been an interesting journey. But the, and, you know, in line with what I was, I was meant to talk about, what we're trying to figure out is a piece of plastic with a clock. This is a pretty simple product. You know, how do we take all of these devices and start uncovering all of this data and being able to provide it back so that patients are able to benefit from it, 
healthcare providers are able to benefit from it, and payers are ultimately able to, to benefit from it. So I think, you know, what we're, I, I think that we've cracked the code for how to do this now, and we're now working on using different kinds of sensors in our device, together with exposing that data in a way which is relevant for a three-year-old, a 35-year-old, a 40-year-old, an 80-year-old that's living with diabetes. So that's the stuff that we're working on. And I think the key concept that I wanted to bring is how important it is to not introduce more steps to people's lives, to complicate what they're doing, forcing them to learn about new error codes, trying to tell them is error five worse than error seven. That's what we're doing. Thank you.